Okay, so this is a very fucking difficult question here. I was just in a fuck off mood when I wrote this. Now, this vignette, very, very high yield for US Amelia. You will literally get a vignette just like this where they mention blistering lesions. This is porphyria cutanea tarda as the diagnosis, but they will give you a vignette that sounds just like this. And then they'll simply just ask you for the diagnosis or ask you something easier. I just decided to make this about biochemistry for kicks. Okay, but the point is heme synthesis disorders, porphyria cutanea tarda is one of the important ones you need to know. And it's going to be the answer when you have photosensitivity, plus or minus T colored urine. Okay, so it's caused by a deficiency of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, and it gives you uroporphyrin-3 in the urine. You probably don't have to memorize those names so strictly. You can more just have the association of like, oh yeah, that's the one with the uro, weird sounding compounds. It's all you really need to know uh, to just branch and get the question right. So once again, porphyria cutanea tarda heme synthesis disorder where we have photosensitivity plus or minus T-colored urine, uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase deficiency leading to uroporphyrins in the urine, okay? Now, USMLE is going to ask you about the precursors for heme synthesis. Very fucking high yield. This isn't me preaching, okay? It's on the NBMEs. Otherwise, I would not be talking about this. So when we have heme synthesis, the first step is succinyl-CoA plus glycine via vitamin B6 and delta ALA synthase goes to delta ALA. I'm going to say that again. Succinyl CoA, like literally from the TCA cycle, plus glycine, our simplest amino acid, functional our R group, our functional group is just a proton, via uh, pyridoxine, that's vitamin B6, and delta amino levulinic acid synthase goes to delta ALA. Okay. Succinyl CoA, glycine, B6, delta ALA synthase goes to delta ALA. I'm inculcating that because it's really fucking high yield, all right? He, that's your first step of heme synthesis. If you have a deficiency of delta ALA synthase, that can be X-linked recessive sideroblastic anemia. Sideroblastic anemia can also be acquired, such as due to alcoholism, okay? Rather than a congenital deficiency, it can just be decreased activity of the enzyme. Now, uh, going back to this, uh, they could simply just ask you on the USMLE for, they could give you this vignette of porphyria cutanea tarda, and then they could ask you for one of the precursors, which will just be succinyl-CoA or glycine. Not hard now that I just talked about it, but if you haven't heard that before, you're like, no fucking idea. This is just like a, I hope this is an experimental question. It's not, it's actually easy and high yield, okay? So we just we just established that vitamin B6 is our, uh, our, our vitamin here. So looking at the answer choices, it's going to be choice B, decarboxylation of L-DOPA, you need to know B6 is a, a cofactor for decarboxylation reactions, okay? So uh, when we have catecholamine synthesis, uh, mostly in the uh, hormone synthesized in the adrenal medulla, phenylalanine goes to tyrosine, goes to L-DOPA, uh, goes to dopamine, goes to norepinephrine, and then epinephrine, right? So L-DOPA goes to dopamine via L-DOPA decarboxylase and B6. Now, um, we also have, for instance, Glutamic acid decarboxylase converts glutamic acid to GABA. Uh, histidine decarboxylase converts histidine to histamine. B6 is also a cofactor for the transaminase reactions, such as ALT, AST, like the hepatic enzymes you've heard of. And then most importantly, uh, this, okay, so heme synthesis. There's probably others I'm forgetting, but that's good enough for now, okay? Uh, so choice A, wrong answer, carboxylation of propionyl CoA. Carboxylation reactions refers to I refer to uh, biotin, vitamin B7. So propionyl CoA carboxylase is involved in odd chain fatty acid breakdown. So when we're breaking down fatty acids via beta oxidation, we liberate two carbon units called acetyl CoAs. If we have an odd chain fatty acid, we will not liberate a terminal single carbon unit. We will have a terminal three carbon unit called propionyl CoA. Propionyl CoA via propionyl CoA carboxylase goes to methylmalonyl CoA. Methylmalonyl CoA via methylmalonyl CoA mutase and B12 goes to succinyl CoA in the TCA cycle. Um, you don't need to necessarily know that pathway. I'm just fucking explaining this answer choice. All right. So propionyl CoA carboxylase, it's B7. And then um, also biotin is a cofactor for acetyl CoA carboxylase and pyruvate carboxylase. Pyruvate carboxylase is actually, um, it's a good enzyme to know for gluconeogenesis. Okay. 
uh, because pyruvate can't go back to phosphoenyl pyruvate in the glycolytic cycle. It's an irreversible step. So you have to go from pyruvate to oxaloacetate via pyruvate carboxylase and then oxaloacetate uh, back to phosphoenyl pyruvate via PEP carboxykinase and then ultimately back up to glucose. Okay, so that's your explanation, explanation for choice A. That was exciting. Um, now we look at choice C, dehydrogenation of pyruvate. Uh, that's by it, uh, sorry, that's a thymine, so vitamin B1. Now, you need to know that pyruvate dehydrogenase is not pyruvate carboxylase, which I just discussed for choice A. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is actually a large uh, multimeric enzyme involving many cofactors such as B1, B2, B3, B5, lipoic acid. But US really wants you to know that the dehydrogenase enzymes are B1 dependent, so pyruvate dehydrogenase. That's going to bring pyruvate into the TCA cycle, okay, and make uh, acetyl CoA. Um, and then yeah, so I'll make acetyl CoA, and yeah, that's that's fine. So, pyruvate dehydrogenase, it's B1 dependent. We have uh, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, we have succinyl CoA dehydrogenase, and we have transketolase. Those are four uh, B1 or four uh, thymine dependent enzymes. Um, methylation of DUMP, that would probably most closely refer to uh, B9 folic acid, okay? So, when we have our pyrimidine synthesis, uh, DUMP will, so ur uracil essentially, is going to acquire a methyl group and become thymine. So DUMP goes to DTMP, and uh, that's going to be via folic acid uh, derivative. So uh, B9 re refers to a choice D here. Methylation of homocysteine, that's going to be uh, vitamin B12, so cyanocobalamin. Okay, so homocysteine. Uh, will accept a methyl group from uh, a methylated version of folic acid, and homocysteine will become methionine. So it's kind of really fucking complicated and annoying. But B9 and B12 are related in terms of methyl transfers, but homocysteine is going to acquire a methyl group via B12 and as a cofactor and become methionine. And you had a folic acid derivative, of, uh, a methylated a derivative of folic acid that's actually uh, liberating that methyl group to the homocysteine. Okay, so that's the process. You can just think of it as like B12 is a cofactor that enables the recycling of folic acid. That's sort of like, even if you're not really sure what's going on, you can just kind of memorize. You can be like, uh, yeah, B12, that's just a, it's a cofactor that helps with the recycling of B9. It's like, that's satisfactory, okay? So once again, high yield, uh, diagnosis, porphyria cutanea tarda, okay, as heme synthesis disorder. And then as I mentioned in the beginning, it was just me being in a fuck off mood as far as uh, wanting to make this a little bit more difficult uh, of a question, you know? Why not just uh, throw in some biochemistry for kicks, right? All right, that's it.